Oh, hello, and welcome to the joy of painting Middle Earth. I'm Timbo Took, and I'm happy you've joined me. This is a time when we come together to paint the most fantastic landscapes Middle Earth has to offer. That's right. Now, I may not be the best painter in the Shire, but I do love it so, and I'd love for you to paint right along with me. So if you're ready, grab your paints and your brushes, and let's go on an adventure. Okay, let's dive right into it. I've got my canvas all prepared here. What I've done is I've put a liquid white on top of the canvas, just a thin layer. And you can see, we just put it on enough. If we touch our fingertip, there you go. You can see your fingerprint right through that white still. So you know you don't have too much. If you do have too much, just take a towel made of paper and wipe it off. It'll come off real easy. Okay. The reason why we've put that liquid white on the canvas, or magic white as we call it, is because that will help your paints mix together right there on the canvas. Oh, it's like magic. And no wonder it should be. I was taught how to paint by a wizard, the blue wizard, Bob Ross the blue. Yes, that's right. He used to come to the Shire when I was just a, just a little hobbit, and he'd show everyone how to paint week after week. So what I've done here is I've got my canvas and today we're going to do a painting of one of my favorite chapters in the book. Oh, you know the book, The Fellowship of the Ring. This comes from book two, chapter eight. Farewell to Lorien. That's right. Lothlorien is one of my favorite places in Middle Earth. So we're going to come in today and this is just a little bit of a misty, misty area upon the river, the silver load. Okay, we've just got a little bit of our, our yellow right on there. And we're going to come in and just put a bit of it, just dull it out. Oh, yes. Picking up that magic white underneath. We're just going to spread that through and we really want to work that in. Maybe even take a bit of our tit titanium white and mix that in with it. As I said, this is just in the morning as they're, as they're leaving out. Our fellowship has got onto the boats that were given to them by the elves of Lothlorien and they're going to sail away. That's right. They are going to take those boats down the Silverload River, right down to the Great River, the Anduin, as they continue on their quest. Just bring it down. This is going to be water down here. It'll have a little bit of glimmer to it. But then we're going to make our sky a little bit, little bit of uh, dark clouds in there. Not too dark. But we'll just take our titanium white, some of that, we'll put it right up here. There we go. And we're just going to come in to put some color in there. Our ivory black. All right, once we have that, just a gray color for our clouds, we're going to come up and we're just going to circle that in up here. Just mix that right in. They're not necessarily storm clouds, but blend those together. There we go. Just pick that up, mix it in, blend it down. We'll look for the highlights that we can go back into. And just bring a little more color in there. Just give us 
some darks and some lights to the clouds. So what we want to do now is maybe, maybe come back in. We'll look and see where the darker spots are. And we'll just pick those up. There we go. Let's put them out here. Just roll that in. Some out this way, some over here. There we go. Now let's clean off our brush and then we're just going to come back and, and diffuse that out a bit. And of course, I'm not painting outside again. It's a bit hot these days. So what I have to do is, rather than beat the Sauron out of my brush on my easel, I just have a rubbish bin down here. There we go. Just clean off that brush. Now we're washing our brushes in odorless paint thinner. That way it doesn't stink up your whole hobbit hole. Now, once I've got it washed, I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna soften this out. Just doing circles with the corner of the brush. Just come in and soften some of these areas. That's right. Just mix these together. There we go. Now what we'll do is just knock some of the paint off your brush that you picked up and we'll come back in and we're just gonna just lift, just let the wind lift all this, just lift it away. There we go. And soften it out. This isn't a sky where things are going to be too contrasted. No. And maybe we'll even come in to our titanium white again. And we'll just get some on that corner of the brush. Using our two inch brush, of course. There we go. Just put that just some of that white on the corner. And now we'll just circle that in, flip it over the other corner and just blend it together. Going back to our corner that's picking up the color. There we go, it just gives us just gives us some areas of lighter clouds and darker clouds. It's not an ominous sky today. It's just one of those kind of a gloomy day. A nice day to hop into a boat and float right down the river. That's right. I love to do that myself. I do love the water. Unlike a lot of other hobbits. But I didn't have a normal upbringing. I had some legends as grandfathers, my grand gaffer Gamgee and my grandpappy Took, who went on this great adventure. They used to tell me their stories, and they put that, that adventure right in my heart. I hope you have adventure in your heart, too. In fact, that's what painting is. Painting is an adventure. It's one you can go on without ever having to walk out your door. But it always helps if you can walk out your door to have these adventures and know what you want to paint when you get back to your hobbit hole. There we go. We'll just drop in that sky. That's just in the back for us. Just those clouds rolling through. 
Okay, let's get to some of the trees. Now again, we're just putting some trees and these are way off in the distance. And we'll just come in and we're just going to pick up some of this gray color here. Make it a little dark. Make it a little dark here. Because these are just going to be the shadows of the trees back here. And we'll just pop this down. There we go. Lothlorien is known for many of its great trees. The leaves of the trees in Lothlorien, they don't fall off like other, other leaves do. No, they stay on all year round. They stay their golden color all through the fall, all through the winter, and in the spring when the green leaves come and those new buds open up, that's when the golden leaves fall. So that's where the saying, not idly do the leaves of Lothlorien fall. It is true. It is very true. And we're just going to put shadow. This is a great tree way off in the distance. And we'll come and we'll put some others. There we go. These ones stand up a little straighter. This is the these are the trees that our party will pass as they head out of Lorien. There we go. Some of them are going to be taller than others. Just taking your two inch brush and when you put that color on just now. My brushes are pretty ragged these days. If you have a nice new brush, you can get that tip down to a nice edge. Mine won't do that. I'm going to have to pick up some new brushes, but that's okay. That's part of it. That's part of the fun of it. Just put those in. There we go. These are way off in the distance. We, we won't see a whole lot of detail in these. There we go, pick up some more. And we're trying not to make them all uniform. Again, these just kind of take up the background. Maybe back there. There we go. We don't know. We don't know. Then what we're going to do, let's knock some of this, clean off this brush. Okay, now it looks a little bit of a mess, but we're going to come down here and we're going to tap this out. Tap that out. Just tap this base out. Just mix that, pull that liquid white right through, right through there. Really, really smash this in. There we go. And then lift, just lift up. Just lift that straight up. There we go. Do the same over here. Really working that liquid white into the canvas there. And if your canvas isn't so steady, you might have to put one of your big old hobbit feet on the base of your easel. 
but it shows you how hard we're really tapping this in. That's right, and then lift, lift, lift. That'll just soften those out. There we go, and we're going to do the same here. Knock some more of that paint that I picked up off the brush. And this gives it just that misty, misty appearance. So it just kind of fades away. Just soften these details. There we go. Uh, get that little guy off there. There we go. There. Now, now we've set up our background that we can put more details in front, and those will just be things that play off in the story in the back. What you want to do when you're painting, you want to think of it like making a sandwich. Yes, you put one layer down, you put your piece of bread on the bottom, and then you stack some meat on top of that, and maybe some, some mustard and some other things. Oh, no cherry tomatoes though. Mm, yuck. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, now we want to get meat with a little more flavor as we come forward. So that's what we're doing. We're just putting it in, in layers. We're going to take our script liner brush and we're just going to come into some of this dark, dark color here. Maybe get a dash of that burnt umber. There we go. And we just have some trees and things now that are a little bit closer than those ones way off in the distance. We're just going to put some indication of those, those things young trees right back here so there we go we just come in put some of that color on there these trees are off in the back There we go, maybe reaches out and comes back there. There we go. And you see, you just bring that in. No real plan to it. If you want to go thicker, just press your brush a little bit harder onto the canvas. There we go. There we are. Just a little yonk. Uh, there we go. And again, these are still in the background. So we'll have some other things in front of them when it comes time. We just give ourselves some of these details. Some of the branches, some you can see. Some are bigger than others, some are not. And you never know what we might do later. We may put a big old tree right in front of that one and we won't even be able to see it, but we'll know it's there. It's our painting, it's our world. We do what we want, right? That's right. That is right. And these sticks and things end up just poking through. So you can stand there and do that all day if you wanted. But I just put a few in real quick so you could see. And put some there. We don't want the edge of our canvas to feel left out. There we go. Now maybe take our brush again, our dry two inch brush and we're just going to tap on these, just soften them up just a bit. Okay, and it doesn't look like much yet, but 
This again is just a back layer and then we're going to put some in front of it. That's the exciting part. Now let's come back and before we fill things in, let's give some leaves on these trees that are back there. So what we're going to do, we're going to come into, I've got this yellow ochre today. Maybe just pick up a touch of sap green. And we'll come on and do just a little bit of highlight. But just with the corner, I'm just using the one inch brush today. Just with the corner of that brush. We're going to come on and we're just going to add some highlights in here. Not too many, not too many, because that's still very far away. And there's not a lot of details we're picking up from this tree. But they just kind of come in there and come through. We'll do the same back with some of these way off in the distance. There we go. This isn't a painting with a lot of bright colors today. This wasn't a time of year where the colors would be so bright. This is, of course, as winter is getting on. At the bottom, of course, tap it out. Turn that brush over. Now I'm getting in a couple of different brushes today. Now I'm taking, this is a filbert brush, a number six. And we're gonna make a little bit more of that golden color to the leaves. And I'm just going into some of our yellow, maybe some of that yellow ochre still. And we'll just come and add on to some of these trees. Just that golden leaves of Lorien. And this is a bit of a small brush. Normally we use big brushes. I just kind of like the, the little rounded curve to them. It's just kind of a fun one to give you some different shapes to the leaves. I do a lot of evergreen trees. A lot of those, and those are fun to do. They're some of my favorites. But this just gives us something a little different than we have do on most occasions. Lorien is a golden forest. It's a golden forest. It's beautiful. I have visited it many times. Unfortunately, the elves are gone from Lorien these days. Oh, I would have loved to seen it in its glory day with all the elves. I would have loved to seen Galadriel. Oh, I heard tales of her beauty and wisdom too. It's these areas here where you can see right through, see beyond the tree, that makes it seem like what you really see when you're out there. When you're out in the forest, you don't, most trees, you're not going to just, it's not a wall. You can see through it. So, you know, when somebody tells you, you can't see the forest through the trees, I beg to differ. I think you can see the trees through the forest or the forest through the trees, either one. But just go through and add them under your trees. I really like it. So I'll take a little bit of time doing this. Now you see how dull that one was back there. By having it a little bit brighter, just a little further ahead, it pushes that big tree back there off into the distance. And you can even have some of those branches come right out, right out over it there. There we go. This is, I really like doing this. This is a fun way to come through and paint. 
And you know, we do paintings very quickly here. And I, I'm just doing that just to show you, you can do a full painting. If you just have a little bit of time, you can do it. Or if you want to take a little bit more time. And when you're at home, you can take all the time you want. If you want to take a whole lazy Saturday afternoon, the whole day from morning till night, oh, feel free. That's a fun way to spend a day. That is right. There we go. Now, because our time together, we have the ability, the magic, to speed things up, I might just jump ahead a little bit so you're not sitting here watching me do this all day long. But that way I'm able to really fill it in so you can see how it'll look once we've got it finished. There we go. Now you can see, sometimes I like to put it on a little bit more thick because that thickness of the paint, that'll give you depth and shadows. So it can pick up even more color from wherever you hang it in your house. So let's go back to our one inch brush and we'll just come in and some of that yellow ochre that we had and just Tap it out, not as many details down here. There we go. Now, we're going to come to the part where we have water down here. So what we want to do with some of that water is let's go back to one of our two inch brushes. And now we want the water to show some reflection from these trees and things that we have in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into that yellow ochre and that Cadmium yellow is what we used today. We're going to put some of that on the brush. Pick that up. Now, we're going to take where land is and we're just going to bring this down. There we go. This gives us some golden reflections. Just bring it straight down. Gives us some reflections in that water. So just, you can angle your brush, but bring it straight down. There we go. Now, clean off that brush. Now that we have that brush cleaned, what we're going to do is we're going to pull the, pull those colors straight across, giving us the reflection. There we go. Gives us that reflection in the water. Gives us that golden, golden water. Glistening in the morning sun. That's what it's doing.
pick up a little more color we'll go a little darker back some of that yellow ochre so we have that darker color put that on our brush and back here this is the way it's going to flow away right back that way there we go and we'll take this we'll give ourselves that big tree reflecting in the water down here let's make that even a little darker put some shadow in there Put that there, there we go. Now clean off this brush. And what we're going to do, we're going to come back and again, giving ourselves reflection, just pulling it across. And you see, we take out any details there. Softening that out as we go. The water is rippling, so the light gets pulled to and fro. Now, that may be a little too golden, so what we do is we come to our white. Put some white on our two inch brush, just some of that titanium white. And let's just give some highlight to the water as well. Running those streaks of white, that's where the water is glistening. As our travelers sail off in their canoes, they look back and the water is just shimmering. And this is where we give it some shimmer. Make sure you're pulling it straight across. You want to give it shimmer not hills in the water there we go and what we'll do is we'll come back in now and we'll put some land in there that'll give it a clear definition of what what is water and what is land it's just important to make those reflections first then we're gonna come in with a fan brush there we go Let's lighten this out using some burnt umber. Let's lighten that up with some titanium white. And we can just rub in some land. There we go. down there mm. 
as I said, we're just giving ourselves some land underneath here. So this one, this will come out here and makes his way back. There we go. <clears throat> now, we also want, now that we have a little land in there, just pull that down. Pull it straight down, again giving ourselves more reflection. There we go. And take our dry brush. And just soften that reflection out even more. There we go. Okay, now we have that, but we have some bigger trees and things that live in here as well. So, what we want to do is let's come in and let's give ourselves a big tree right here that comes just all the way down to the water. So, so he stretches down Uh, we want them to be big. They have some big trees in Lorien. And right now we're just, we're pulling off as much paint as we're putting on. This one comes right down to the water. There we go. And this is like one of those swamp trees that has the big roots, has the big roots that just come right over. Take a drink of that water. Lots of them. There we go. Just drinking it up. Just using our fan brush to make them. Just trying to lay down these dark colors on them. Maybe, maybe there's another one right here. There we go. Now we're getting some trees in there. Some big ones. He goes right off the edge of our picture.
Maybe there's one back here. Who sticks up? And he's in the back there. He just sticks right up out of there. Probably should have put him in first, but that's okay. Sometimes it's fun just to disrupt things. There we go. And let's not let this side get lonely. We'll give him spring it right through there. Yonk. There we go. Right down to the water's edge. There we go. Maybe there's one he sticks up back here. He's not as close. And not to be forgotten, this guy right over here. So, these ones, their branches are so tall, we don't even see their tree, their leaves. But over here, maybe, maybe, we see where he branches out. And, oops, I dropped one. Let's see, we use this guy. Which ones have we used? Uh, we'll go to our script liner brush. Uh, just put a little bit of paint thinner on there. Just to make them easy. And we'll just bring them right down here with some branches and things. We'll do more of the same for this guy. There we go. Now, let's just give ourselves some dark ochre. I'll use some burnt umber and our yellow ochre. Make that dark and we'll, we'll just drop in drop in some leaves there back in the shadow. There we go. Now, let's come in and give that a highlight. So we're just gonna come back to some of their golden color there. And we'll go. 
I liked some of these. Throw some of those in. Now, what we'll do is we're going to come back to our filbert brush and I'm going to go with the brightest yellow we have on the palette. Just get some of that on there. And then these parts that are just catching the morning sun. We'll let him have the highlights. There we go. Just right out here. There we go. Giving us more of those golden leaves of Lothlorien. I know this takes a bit more time with a smaller brush, but this is just the one I felt like using today. There we go. I'm going to come back and I'm going to take some of my dark gray color. We're just going to pick that up and we're just going to give some highlight. Maybe that's a little too dark. We want a grayish highlight to this, but not too gray. There we go. So just put some of that dark color, these deep crevices in the roots. So they make their way down to the water. And then once we do that, We'll pick up their highlight color again, mix it up, there we go, and we come right back over the top, just so you get the rounded appearance of that root as it comes down to the water. Uh, 
There we go. And you see how when you layer those together, it'll give you that rounded appearance. Now that that comes down to the water, now we pull it down. Let's use our bigger brush. And this tree will give a deep shadow in the water. And don't forget, we have these trees over here. Casting their shadow in the water. And then this one too, his roots had come down to the water's edge. And we just bring it down and then match up the roots for our reflection. There we go. Now that we've done that, let's wash off one of our two inch brushes. And then we're going to bring them across for that reflection. There we go. Same on this side. Knock off any paint we just picked up. And there we have our reflection. Now, we have that pretty much done. What we need to do is just take some of our liquid white, our magic white, and we'll cut in a little bit of a shoreline and just put some reflections or just pick that up in the water. So now what we do is I'm going to take my palette knife with our magic weight and we're just going to come in and we'll give some shoreline here. Just cut it straight across. There we go. Cut that in. And 
and you can just bring it right out some of that will stream right across there we go now upon each of these roots there's going to be some of that where these roots hit the water now you're not going to hurt your canvas so you can push as hard as you'd like there you go maybe grab a little bit of titanium white mix into it and it can be a little thicker There we go. Just putting in where these, where the tree meets the water. Maybe it jogs back this way a little. There we go. And the same on this side, just cut in that shoreline. Right where the water meets the edge. Right where the water meets the land. There we go. Come here. Put it in right where these trees are hitting. There we go. Now you just put some of these some of these lines across your water. Just show where there's some disturbance there. Okay, this is a good painting for our farewell to Lorien. We have the Silver Lode River as it flows out of Lorien and it meets the Grand River, the Anduin, and it'll take our travelers south. So maybe, just maybe I'll come back into this painting, maybe a little later on this week. And what I'll do is I'll, the lad reel, she sits out on the peninsula and watches our our travelers leave. And as our fellowship, as they head down the river, they're going to be in some, some canoes. So maybe we'll just have a little bonus episode this week and put them in. I don't know. Hopefully it'll work out. This was a fun one to do. I like all the different colors in it. I hope you did too. Now, thank you for joining me. I hope you go and do some great paintings yourself. Goodbye and God bless. Thank you for joining me on today's painting. I'm so happy you were with me. Now, if you'd like to continue to go on painting adventures with me, become part of my fellowship. And you do that by clicking that subscribe button below. Yes, and be sure to give it a like and a share. That would be oh so helpful. Now, we don't know how many of these seeing stones are unaccounted for. So we don't know who else is watching. I've got to go. Have a good day.